Hello you lovely people. Welcome back to my channel for part two of the buyer's guide to portable emulation. Right in the first part we covered the budget end didn't we? Uh, so yeah it was a, a nice range that gets you by especially if you like 8 bit 16 bit and pushing it a bit sometimes as well especially with the power kitty Q90. But now we're into the mid-range, guys. So we're going from roughly, ooh, 60 to 120 pounds. So it's mid-range. And we're going to cover some fantastic manufacturers, guys. One very interesting one at the beginning, because that is one that is really up to you, if you want to go that route. And then we're going to jump onto manufacturers like Retroid and Ambernick. These are awesome, fantastic quality manufacturers, guys. They make brilliant, brilliant products. So yes, we're going to take a look at four this time round. And uh, yeah, and see what mid-range portable emulation can get you. Now, we all know that on the lower end, you're really, really pushing it already at PlayStation. Mid-range guys, you can actually go as far as a Dreamcast and PSP to a fashion. And uh, yeah, these machines are gorgeous. The build quality is going up, of course, oh, tremendously. Although, I tell you what, those cheaper ones can hold their own. The old Bit Boy Pocket Go and the uh, Pal Kitty Q90, they've got some fabulous build quality to them. So yeah, but let's see what mid-range gets you guys what your uh phew, like i said guys what 60 to 120 quid roughly something like that anyway what that will get you in portable emulation right hold on to your britches guys because these are four flipping doozies coming up right back in a sec right here we go guys with part two to a buyer's guide to portable emulators and we're moving on to a very, um, hmm, it's as you make it, shall we say, because, I'll explain, guys, because it is a retro pie, or a raspberry pie. Um, it really does depend on what you want to put into it, guys. Now, this is the one that Nate sent me from America. So I can only go by that one because it is literally the only raspberry pie that I have. So I have to go by this one. But... Let's get it out the out the way, guys. You can spend as much as you want on one of these, you know. It depends what case you go for, what quality it is. It depends what screen you go for. It depends on what pie you go for, what board you put into it. It's entirely up to you. Now, there was, you know, Pi Zero boards flying around out there on the front of magazines for free. That is a very cheap way of doing it. This is a Zero W, which the W stands for Wi-Fi. Um, and it's a little bit beefier. So it really does depend what you want to do. But for this particular build here, because bear in mind, guys, with a pie, bear in mind, he says with his finger pointing, um, you know, most of the time, unless you want to spend, you know, quite a bit of money having one built for you, it is a builder's kit. So in other words, you've got to hunt out a screen, you've got to hunt out the pie board, you've got to hunt out your case and all your buttons and everything to build up a fantastic unit at the end of the day. Now this one is gorgeous. Look at this guys, the build quality on this is fabulous. Obviously it is designed after the original Game Boy. Oh, the, just from the front already here guys, look you got a, yeah it's a mono speaker guys, but it kicks out enough. It really does, it kicks out enough for what you want. These buttons are gorgeous, the action buttons, just listen to this. Just enough clickiness, guys. They are fantastic and they feel lovely. Then the start and select. Oh, just, just, just brilliant. Not even a noise coming from them, but they feel brilliant under the, under the thumb. The directional pad is to die for. That is lovely. Yep, absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous on the front already. So, what else have we got on here? Well, underneath we just have a headphone jack. So that's brilliant. Here, guys, believe it or not, you have got a contrast wheel, even though it's got a modern screen in it. And then you have 
this fantastic uh, priority <laughs> power little uh, power plug. Uh, it's fantastic to have it though that you've got the choice of batteries as I will show you in a minute and the power so it's fantastic to have it there. On this side guys you've got your volume wheel you know how much I love volume wheels. Then on top guys let's have a look you just have your on off switch that is literally just your power switch. Now spinning it around this is what makes it interesting already guys look here you may not have shoulder buttons because that would be a bit of a high reach wouldn't it but look they put them here they put them here instead so you get two shoulder buttons or as i like to term them middle buttons because that's what they are aren't they they're sitting in the middle but again brilliant to have them now inside the battery compartment let's have a look Inside here, guys, obviously, that is where your little clip goes here into this hole there. But don't let it deceive you guys, because I don't know if you'll be able to see that in this light, but there is a port in there. And that port is literally for you to plug something in there and you can update it. That is wicked. Absolutely wicked to update any updates that may be available for your Zero W in this case. Here's a little switch as well, guys. So there's lots going on here. So yeah, brilliant, put that back on, there we go. So nicely protected underneath there. Now, as I said guys, you can choose to put those batteries in, he says taking it off again. You can choose to put batteries in, or you can do what I do most of the time, because you've got to have really, really good batteries guys. They've got to be Duracell or Ever Ready or something like that, something really, really good to uh, really power it properly. So what I do is I use a plug and I will show you that in a minute. Now, all of this case, guys, all of this gorgeous case is beautiful, obviously, and cost you a little fortune just to buy that. Um, but yeah, this is not where your zero is, guys, not at all. Your zero, da, 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 put him down a minute and put him aside. Because yes, guys, your zero, or zero W in this case, is in here. Yeah, it's in this. It's inside this Game Boy looking cartridge thing. How fantastic does that look, guys? And to think the zero is sitting inside of this. Not in that, oh, he says dropping it. Not inside that huge bloody case. Wow. Not inside here. No, inside here. So, yeah, let's have a look around it. Obviously, very much like a Game Boy cartridge, even there. But that is your zero board inside there. Now, as you can see, this is, uh, yeah, faking the Game Boy cartridge. And I think oh, that looks fantastic. And it goes so well with that case, doesn't it? Just just, just brilliant, the way the whole thing comes together. Um, but yeah, over here, guys, as you can see, that looked like a link cable cover, didn't it? Like back in the old days when you used to hook up your Game Boy with your friend with a link cable. But no, guys, that is your SD card in there with your whole gubbins on there. ROMs, the, uh, the OS is on there. Everything's on there, so that is awesome. So we're going to slide him back in. There we go. And he literally goes in like a Game Boy, guys, just like that. There. Right, as I said, guys, I do not have batteries for this. So we're going to take this cable and we're going to plug it in, guys. So, right, we're going to go around this side. Hopefully, I've got enough reach here. There we go. Just in there, guys, like that. There we are. Tuck it round and hopefully we can see the screen. Right, let's turn it on and I'll warn you it takes a little bit of time to uh, load up and everything so have a bit of patience because I want to show you in real time because that might be a you know a selling point or a not selling point for you you might not have the patience to sit there and wait for this to boot up every time like this it might drive you balmy but maybe it's a selling point for you because you know you've got patience you want to spend just a little bit of money you know I mean this whole kit together guys you're probably looking at about 60 quid these days. Uh, if you were to get one ready built and made for you, um, you're probably looking at a bit more. But to be honest, build it yourself. Have a go at it. I'm just very lucky that I've got such a good friend who sent me one all ready, done and dusted. Right, here we go, guys. Here comes some uh, gubbins coming up. We're just going to wait it out. And like I said, I'm going to do it Show you exactly how long this takes to boot. 
Right, so you think you're nearly there, look when it comes up with RetroPie, but you're not. There's a little bit more to come. Now I warn you guys, at the moment we haven't got too much on here. I'm just going to show you uh, a Game Boy game, because obviously the video can't go too long anyway. We've got another three units to look at. So yeah, just give it a bit of time again. So yes guys, it is entirely up to you what money you want to put into a uh, Raspberry Pi. Entirely up to you. You can go this route and spend maximum about £60-£70. Or you can go as expensive as you like really, depending on what you go for. There we go, it's booting into Emulation Station. There we go, it all takes a little bit of time. And then you're into the menu, guys. Here we go. Now you can see you've got links, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, uh, Sega Master System, Mega Drive, N64, NES, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color. And then we're back around again to, yeah, there, to your settings and what have you. So yeah, let's just go straight over to Game Boy, guys, because I know we definitely got some of them on there. I think the Kirby game's on here, so we'll just have a look at that. Right, so yeah, just the one game. Yeah, as you can see, it's curvy. Right, right. it's going to look like it's going to crash here, but it doesn't. It does kick in with the game. Right, as you can see there, what it's saying. But it hasn't. Just give it a bit of patience. I think you do have to press it. Yep, there we go. We're in. Fantastic. Right, let's... Just play it for a second. Won't play it too long, guys, because we've got to move on. But this is a fantastic price bracket, guys, because it's up to you, isn't it? You can spend as much or little as you like. You know, like I said, you could get these Raspberry Pis that were free on front of magazines, guys. So really, it, it is up to you how much you spend. It really is. But yep, that is running like a freaking dream. So yeah, let's uh, quit that. Let's come out then you go back there we are so yeah that is that price bracket guys or it's an unusual price bracket because it's up to you what you want to put into it so if you go down the uh, the old raspberry pi route it's up to you but this particular kit all done and dusted you're looking at about mm, 60 to 70 quid but it's the joy of having built it yourself that is what it's all about guys so right Back with the next system. Right guys, next in the price range is Yura Dual Boot. This is an Android device, but it is dual boot as well because this is a Retroid Pocket, the original model, guys. Now, later on in the higher price range, you are going to see the Retroid Pocket 2, its little brother. But this is already a fantastic unit that I can't recommend enough this is gorgeous guys absolutely gorgeous uh, again came from nate and um, he calls it the stormtrooper and you can certainly see why can't you in this black and white glory and um, a lot of clones out there guys i've got to warn you now you've really got to have one and be very careful when you even buy that guys i mean if it's branded like this you should hopefully be safe but there is a lot of clones out there so you have got to be very, very careful when you're buying it. Make sure you're buying the real thing. With so many clones around, you don't want to end up with something that is, uh, you know, oh, going to cost you probably just as much. Uh, which in this case, guys, I mean, these will set you back. They're a bit older now. They will set you back about 80 quid. Um, back in the day, they were about 130. But now, around about 80 quid, and that's brand new. Uh, so you don't want to end up with a clone that is going to perform a little worse because this performs like a dream, guys. It's gorgeous. It's fantastic. So just make sure it is branded. There's loads of this exact model, guys. Without that, in different colours and what have you. Um, you know, obviously, Retroid themselves did do other colours as well. But just make sure you're getting the authentic thing. I know it's pretty difficult this day and age to, uh, to make 100% sometimes, but... Just make sure you got that there already, and that should be a big step forward. Now, 
like I said guys this is a gorgeous thing we'll look at the front again first with this gorgeous size screen that is just a lovely sized screen so you've got one analog stick guys only unfortunately on this one and you might notice guys no shoulder buttons whatsoever so yeah no shoulder buttons guys that's a bit limited already um, but yeah, fantastic stick, guys. The one that you have got, it is like a switch stick. It is gorgeous. The D-pad is wonderful. Can you hear that? Oh, just wicked. These are oh, just perfect again. I can't highly recommend the build quality of this machine. These, no, oh, just, they're just fabulous, guys. They really are. This is a fabulous, fabulous unit. Right on the side, you have your power switch. You have a volume rocker. On top, you have your, obviously, a HDMI out, guys. This is the smaller uh, plug for HDMI out, but at least it's got it. And I was lucky I had quite a few of these cables kicking around. It's the kind of thing you would use in a Samsung phone, for instance. Um, here we have headphones. SD card slot and your charger, which is a B, which is unusual this day and age. You know, usually it's C, but of course, this is a slightly older unit. Yep, yeah, and that's it, guys, on the back. Absolutely nothing. There you go, nothing, guys. Even the, uh, you know, sometimes you like maybe have a manufacturer sticker on there, but this one doesn't have one, and I don't think they did. So, yeah, beautiful looking thing. Right, shall we turn it on now? Now, I haven't got it on the Android. I've got it on the Retroid one. So we're just going to take a quick look at some of the uh, excellent emulation that this thing can kick out on higher end stuff. Like Dreamcast and PSP. And I think for the purposes of this video, we might go to Dreamcast. There we go, just got to wait a moment. Should it kick in with the Retroid one? Yep, yeah, here we go. So it's on the Retroid uh, firmware, guys, as you can see. Now, obviously, it's a bit confusing at first when you're on here. Android is pretty straightforward if you're used to an Android phone, but this is a little bit more confusing, but you do get used to it in the end. So you just go up to the top and you can go to category, and what have you. So there, category there. And then at the bottom, it'll tell you what you're on. Like there's PSP. Let's move over. And I'm trying to find myself. Oh, no, we're going to the wrong bit. Okay, right, okay. Go down, right, and skip it along. Just until I reach. Dreamcast. Come on, Dreamcast, where are you? There we are. We've only got the one game, guys, but we'll try it. It's Dino Crisis, I do believe. Yeah, it is. Right, so, yeah, let's play that one. Is that what I do? No, it's not. I've just done the wrong thing. Oh, well. Go back again. Here we go. Maybe it's that one then. Where are you, bugger? There we go. Got there in the end. It's very confusing when you have all these devices, guys. All these different things. I just skip through all that. He says. Obviously, you can set all that up if you want. Got to focus in a bit better. There we are. Agent name 
And you can hear it's fantastic. Let's move it along. Yep, absolute spot on sound. Here you get a little bit of distortion on the sound, but it does sort itself out after the cinematic. Let's skip that along. There's only a tiny bit of distortion and then it's, uh, it's absolutely fine again, as you'll see. So as you can see guys, this is playing fantastic. And I tell you what, when you're actually on the playing field yourself, it's just as fantastic. Right, now you're going to see because she's going to move. Right, here we go. Obviously the fiddly controls that you've got to get used to again from back in the day. But it is running like a sodding dream. There you go with your menus and things like that. And of course you can run faster and stuff as well. Let's see which one buttons that would be. I don't know. But yeah, absolutely spot on guys, I can assure you. So what a fantastic machine this is. So if you're wanting to play your more high-end stuff like Dreamcast, PSP, N64, this is already a good choice guys. It won't play them all flawlessly, I'm not going to pretend it won't. But at the price bracket of 70 quid to maximum pushing it to 80, you are going to be sorted for the majority of it. And anything under that is flawless like PlayStation and what have you. Brilliant. And again guys, dual boot, you can go either way, you can go Android, or you can get you know, the Retroid OS itself. And it even has a store on there guys, where yes, you can grab yourself some naughty games. So yeah, fantastic price bracket, 70 to 80 quid. Right, back with the next one. Right guys, now we're into the uh, 70 pound price bracket really. Um, I say that, I mean... On um, Amazon, they still sell this for around about 85 quid. But if you shop around, you can find it for about 70. Um, this is the famous, the beautiful, the Ambernic 350, guys. The RG350. Now, something I've got to tell you straight away, guys, is be very careful which one you buy. Because there's two different versions of this machine. Now... I'm obviously going to skip ahead here and show you this, but you will see here there is only one SD slot. Now, on the later edition, um, they actually have two SD slots, and this volume rocker here is moved to the side there, because they have another SD slot there, and that one holds your firmware, and this one is for your ROMs. And on this model, guys, that other slot is actually inside of here. You can just make out a memory card there. You see that? Yep, that's the one that holds your, your OS, guys, basically. So you've got to take the back off to get to that if you want to custom firmware it, which is what we did. We took the back off, stripped it down to get to that SD card, and then we put a custom firmware on. So yeah, be very careful with that, guys. We're going to go back to that in a minute because that is something that has to be shown again. Uh, the fantasticness of it. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Now, on this little beauty, unlike the RG280 from part one, uh, M, the metal one, uh, this has two analog sticks and they are 
to die for. They are gorgeous guys. Again, switch like, they are beautiful. All of the buttons on here are the usual Ambernick quality. You want a quality product guys, go for Ambernick. Oh my God, are they gorgeous. All of the buttons guys, these are very SNES like, as you can see with the colorings. Oh, come on, stop focusing on me. And you've got these two buttons here as well, which are again, oh, just, they're just so clicky, they're beautiful. All of the buttons are fantastic. And then on top guys, yeah, you've got two sets of shoulder buttons, yay. Fantastic, and they are so micro switchy. And there guys, we have on this model, of course, you have your headphone, you have your, he says, bring it in HDMI, and then you've got a USB for connecting external stuff, and sorry, a USB-C for connecting external stuff, and then you've got a USB-C for charging. So yeah, USB-C on this one. And as I say on the bottom, guys, it'll vary to which model you've got. Twin speakers, so that's fantastic as well. Reset button there, and of course, here we have your on and off. So yeah, gorgeous thing guys. And on this side, absolutely nothing. And on that side, absolutely nothing unless you've got the upgraded one, which has the volume rocker there, of course. So yeah, be very careful with that guys. Now, what I love about this particular one that I have is it's clear. Look, you can see all the components in there. This just rings of, uh, you know, early 90s uh, Max and what have you. Oh, it's just beautiful. Look at that. And when you spin it around, guys, it's even more impressive. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? If this floats your boat, you'll love this. Absolutely superb. Wow. Right. Okay, I suppose we better turn it on. Now, I've, I didn't have an SD card in this one because I robbed it, basically, to do a different unit. So I've stuck the, uh, the 280 in, so I'm hoping... We'll get some joy with it. Right, let's turn it on. Let's find the button. There we go. And see what happens. Hopefully we'll be okay. Should kick in with the Ambernick symbol, unless it was completely dead, which is possible. Come on, are you going to turn on or what? Might be a technical issue thing, guys, and we'll have to come back. Because it's looking like it could be flat as a pancake. Oh, that would bloody happen right now, wouldn't it? Right. Back in a sec. Right, back again. Here we go. We're powered up here. Look, we've got the plug in. What a fool letting it run out. Right, okay, here we go. Turn it on. This has got a gorgeous screen again, guys. The viewing angle on it is to die for. Absolutely beautiful. And you can see, guys, it is the same Linux um, as you had on the 280 on the RG280M. Um, this one has been custom firmware, so it will look slightly different, but it's the same type of thing. I'm hoping that we can get onto some uh, games, but or a game at least. But as you can see, guys, here we go with the applications again. You've got lots and lots of stuff here again. There we go. Then you can go over to your settings. There's all your settings, and this is where you power it off, guys. Never power it off on the button on the bottom. Power it off through this, uh, what looks like an app. And of course, you can go over to the ports that are on here again, like Mr. Driller and what have you. We're not going to look at those this time, because we looked at them, of course, on the, uh, the 280. And then back over to emulators. Right, so I'm hoping that there's something on here. Shall we have a look and see? Hmm. Fingers crossed, because I'll tell you what, when you've got as many memory cards as I have, with all different operating systems and whatever, it gets very confusing. But we'll give it a go, nevertheless. Right, where shall we go to? Uh, do, do, do. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, look, you've got Scummy there. Oh, you've got so many here, guys. This is just awesome how many different ones you actually have. But I thought we would go, obviously, for something like Game Boy Advance, because that would have been a good one to test it. But... Where is it gone? Trying to find it, guys. Again, you get very confused with it all. Uh, 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 where are we? Oh, we'll just go for this, guys. There we go. See if we can get onto. No, nothing on there. 
Uh, game Boy Color, maybe. Oh, yes, here we go. So we'll do Game Boy Color, guys. As I said, this is another fantastic price bracket, uh, bracket guys, for, for anybody who doesn't want to spend too much money. So you're looking at, you know, like I said, guys, about 70 quid. Maximum 85, something like that. Uh, which one shall we go for? I don't know. Oh, sport for choice here. Look, there's loads of them, guys. Loads. Uh, let's keep going down. Let's go by here. Uh, action Man. No, I don't think we want to play that, do we? No, 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 no. See, look, I'm not ready for this. Let's show try Aladdin. There we go. You can see a fantastic border there. You don't have to have it, guys, of course. I like it. Although it makes the screen quite tiny. But you can take that away. You can hear how fantastic that sounds. Hopefully that's focusing in the right thing. Oh, that's a bit blurred. Oh, there we go. There we go. Right, your little sod coming in. Yeah. I'm not going to be doing very well there, guys. I'm sure you can see it was playing beautifully. Got it in there. Again, guys, what a fantastic machine for what it does. You know, it's absolutely fabulous. It's just a shame we can never show too, uh, too much because the video will get too long. Right, okay, with this one, I do believe you just go like this. And then you kick out of it, is it? No, maybe not. Hmm, which one was it? Uh, haha, was it this one? This is the trouble when you... Ah, it is. It's the power button again, guys. Just click it twice. And uh, you should be away. Right, let's quit. There we go. And I'll kick you back into the uh, game menu. Or the game list. And then you just go back. Ah, uh, he says no. It's with... Ooh, ooh, one of these. That's it. There we are. We're back out again. Uh, let's have a look at something else quickly. Because that wasn't really very exciting, was it? Uh, let's have a look at Mega Drive, see if anything is on there. Might not be, guys, this is the trouble. It depends what we put on at the time. And I've got a funny feeling we didn't put any of them on. No, it doesn't look like it, does it? Right, let's go back out again. Ah, uh, come on, you bugger. There we go. Let's have a look here. Do we have any one this one? Uh, probably not. Let's have a look. Oh, what have we got there then? Let's have a look. Oh, something has come up here. Let's have a look. We've got Mr. Digger here. Mr. Driller even. Mr. Digger. Oh, seriously, no hope. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, there it is. We'll just put that on quick and show you. We've got Wonder Swan. It's fabulous anyway. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. You know how much I love this game. Right, so, which one do we have to press? <laughs> this one here. There we go, is it? No, not this time. No, it could be this one. Yes, it does vary, guys. Sometimes it's these two. Sometimes it's that one a couple of times. So, yeah, but that's where we're going to leave it anyway. Because we have one more to do, guys. And that one is the, oh, just the ultimate one in this price bracket, guys. It is the ultimate one. It is gorgeous. Right, so that was the Ambernick RG350. And it is a beauty, guys. It is. It's just a bit outshone by the next one, guys. But at this price bracket, guys maximum 80 quid i would rather say 60 to 70 it's fantastic right back
with the last one. Right, and here we go, guys, with the last one. This is the baby of them all in this price bracket, guys. This is my favourite of this price bracket. This is gorgeous. This is, oh, I, I can't even begin to tell you how absolutely fabulous, brilliant, gorgeous, everything that this machine is. This is the Ambernic RG351P in my case. Now, Nate, my mate, he has got the metal version. Now, there's one big thing you've got to be aware of with these uh, RG351P or M. Now, the P, this one, does not have Wi-Fi built in. You basically got to get a Wi-Fi adapter and put it into this little baby. And you will also need then a C connector to put it in. So you're going to basically have to have the Wi-Fi toggle. And then you're going to have to put that into an adapter, which then goes into the C port. And then you will have Wi-Fi. Now on the M, the metal version of this baby, you get built in Wi-Fi. So those problems are completely eliminated. So that is fantastic if you want to go that little bit extra, guys, because this beauty here the plastic version the p that's what it stands for p um will set you back about 120 quid maximum now i've heard people picking them up for 90 and sometimes even less um but yeah you're looking at anything up to about 120 quid so but there's a good bloody reason for that these are gorgeous now already the buttons guys look at this at the front here, you've got two switch analog sticks. And they are both sticks, guys. No hidden nub on one side. These are both sticks. And they are fantastic. Oh, and there's a bit of dirt there, look. Oh, from the case. There we go. Got rid of it. So, yeah, both of these are gorgeous. Oh, just listen to those. They are fantastic, guys. And then, like on the switch, you have the two buttons up here again. And this is start and select, but they're up here. There we go. And that D-pad is gorgeous. On top, guys, you've got... Yeah, you've got two sets of shoulder buttons. And then very much like the 350, you've got the two C ports here. One for charging and uh, for, uh, you know, putting anything else into. And then you've got another one there just for, like for putting your Wi-Fi doggle into and what have you. Then underneath, guys, you have the SD slot, you have a reset button, and twin speakers again. Gorgeous, bloody thing. And here you have a volume wheel. Yay, the volume wheel. And on this side, guys, you just got your power button there. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic looking, clean, just Oh, the build quality, guys. Isn't it? I always keep saying it, guys, because Nintendo builds some of the best units. This is Nintendo build quality. The plastic is high grade. It is gorgeous. Obviously, if you go for the metal version, even better. On the back, guys, you just got the two pads. And, of course, the icon again, which I like. A lot of people don't. I love that. But these are perfect, guys. Again, like on the... Uh, the 280, if you're going to put it down on the table, it doesn't scratch up the unit. So, yeah, brilliant. But let's turn it on, shall we? Here we go. Again, guys, always turn it off inside the unit, I will show you. This one is running Arc OS, which is a fantastic custom firmware, as you're about to see. Takes a little while to kick on first time. You can obviously just put it to sleep. It does actually last charge for a long, long time in sleep. You're talking a few days, three days, something like that. There we go, guys. Look at that. And I have got my own music playing in the background. Obviously, that's Zelda there. And it will skip into Mario sooner or later. So you can choose to do that. You can choose to stick on your own music. It could be your favourite band or whatever you want. Let's turn that down a little bit. It's a bit drastic. There we go. Turn that down. And uh, yeah, look at the screen, guys. And watch this. 
He says going over to the window, which wasn't a good idea. That is stunning. There is no loss there whatsoever on viewing angle. Beautiful. Right. But we need to see something plain, don't we? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go to one that I don't show that often. And it's a shame, really, because it's fantastic. And I have a lot of games on here of it. Let's see if we can find it. Come on. Yeah, I've got so many on here, guys. You can see it's just endless. Look, look what you can play on this thing. This is, oh, phenomenal. Look at it. Just keeps going, guys, and going. This is just incredible what you can play on here. Incredible. But what we're heading for is Sega CD. Right, let's have a look at a Sega CD game. And we'll go back through those again. I'll also show you how, obviously, to turn it off safely. Right, just to give that a bit of a... You know, uh, not all the images have been scraped on this one, unfortunately. Let's just find a good one. I've got to look over to find one. A uh, good one to show you. Oh, here you go. Look, Chuck Rock. We'll try that. Chuck Rock. I love this as well, this icon of the uh, Game Boy for the last release of the uh, Retro Arch yes. That is fantastic already, isn't it? There we go. There you go in and just press play. Fantastic. <laughs> Nice simple one with Chuck Rock. Here it comes. See if I can skip that. No, can't skip it. Can we skip it here? No. I'll have to put it with it. Sorry. No skipping available. Hello, you can see me in my phone. Is it skip it? I love that. It's absolutely super. Come on, you. Let's play. Let's play a little bit. See, it's playing flawlessly, guys. Absolutely flawlessly, sound-wise, music-wise, whatever-wise. It is brilliant. Hey. Yeah, absolutely superb, guys. What a fantastic, fantastic machine this is. Oh, and again, guys, you can get a lot of Dreamcast out of it. You can get a lot of PSP out of it. It's not perfect for them, but... We're going to get to that price bracket in the next part of this series, guys, of course. But yeah, absolutely fabulous. Now, it varies with quitting with these. Uh, sometimes it's here. No, that's just pause. So sometimes you've got to go here. And for some reason, mine keeps getting stuck in uh, RetroArch, and I've got to uh, quit it that way. But you can do that, sort that out in the settings. I just haven't done it yet. I've got a bit used to it. Now, I'm actually running a... 253 or whatever it is, 258 or whatever gig bloody card. Um, you know what I mean. Um, it's a massive card, guys, and I have got literally thousands upon thousands of games on here. This is a little stunner, guys. Um, you can go up to, I do believe, a terabyte card if you've got the uh, vast amounts of money to buy one. I think they're about 300 quid just for a poxy card. Something ridiculous like that. But yeah, you can do it if you wanted to. Again, guys, look at that. Right, we're going to go around. So uh, Sega CD. Let's have a look at what you got in there. Sega 32X. And bearing in mind, guys, these all play. They all play. This is incredible. Sega Saturn is the worst out of the bunch. It still plays, but not very well. Dreamcast, again, mixed bag. You've got VMU, which is the obviously the little unit that you've got in the uh, Dreamcast controller. Game Gear. 
Neo Geo, Neo Geo CD, Neo Geo Pocket, PlayStation, PSP, Minis, Television, ColecoVision, Vectrex, NSX, NSX2, oh, C64, Easy RPG, Pico 8, Ports, loads and loads of ports on here, guys. Scummy VM. And you got uh, that U uh, box or whatever it's called, UX box or something. That's an interesting one, that one. Supervision. Options, Retro Arch. Favorites. And you've got around to Commodore Amiga, Amiga CD, Capcom 1, Capcom 2, Capcom 3, Main, Real 3DO. That is pretty poor as well, guys. When you can even get it going at all. Pokemon Mini. Atari. Oh, 600. Is it 800? Oh, I don't bloody know. I can't make it out there. What's it doing to me? Oh, that is. Oh, whatever. There we go. Atari 2600. There we have the 5200. There we have the 7800. Jaguar. Lynx. Wonder Swan Colour. PC Engine. Turbo Graphics, Graphics, Super Graphics, even and something like the disk system, guys. Wow. NES, N64, Virtual Boy, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game & Watch, Nintendo DS, the SG-1000, the first Sega home system, Mass System, Mega Drive, Genesis, and back round to Sega CD. Right. Now, I said I was going to show you how to quit this, so all you'd have to do, guys, is press this one. And it goes into the setting here. Go down to quit, press A. And go to shut down the system. And yes, there we go, and that shuts it down for you. Simple as that, and you've got to do that, guys. Don't do it by the power button, because you risk losing lots of stuff. Well... What an absolutely fantastic machine to end part two on. Wow, wow, wow. So, of course, in the next part, guys, part three, we're going to be looking at the high-end stuff. So, but I mean, if you were to get one of these, guys, you'd be as happy as bloody Larry already. I can tell you that. It is gorgeous. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed part two and ending on a beauty like this one. Anyway, if you're here, guys, I'm sure you absolutely love emulation. It's been probably a bit of a slog for you looking for a portable um, because there's so many to choose from. So I hope this has got you to the halfway mark. Obviously, in the first part, I showed you all the budget ones. Here, you've gone to mid-range, uh, and then in the next one, you go to um, top-end. So if you love emulation and you are looking for a portable... I hope this has come some way already to getting you there. And if not, maybe the next part will, if you've got a bit more brass in your pockets to spend. Right, with that, guys, I'm going to say the usuals. If you're not subbed already, please drop me a sub. Give me a thummy thumbs up if you're feeling that way inclined. And again, guys, tap the bell icon and the all icon to get any notifications. And like I keep saying, you must love emulation. You're here looking at this. Head over to Facebook, guys, and you can look up mine and my admin team's group, the unofficial Ambernick fan group. And, uh, yeah, on there, guys, there's lots of videos like this, lots of tech videos to help you, and just tons and tons of help in general. And, of course, like-minded people to talk about anything to do with emulation, whether it's portable or home systems. So just head over there, guys. And find us and join up and the banter will commence. Then, of course, I also have my UK Crap Gaming page as well on Facebook. Head over there if you like anything to do with gaming, guys. Whether it's modern or retro, you're covered. Lots of other YouTubers put their videos up there as well. Again, loads of members to banter with, get help from. It is a brilliant place to be if you just love gaming. So head over there and look up UK Crowd Gaming on Facebook. All lowercase, guys, and join up. And lastly, I have a Patreon page. Just head below, guys. It's linked to there. And uh, go over to Patreon and watch my video on why I set it up in the first place. And then you might decide to join me on my Patreon journey. With that, guys, that's the end of part two. Look out for part three coming soon. 
I'm going to love you and leave you, so be the same. Cheers, and goodbye guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.